Hey, we got Nicholas from Reef TV here getting a tour. Hey guys. You wanna hold this? Tell me a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Hey guys, so uh, my name is Mike Todd and uh, I'm a pilot here. Uh, we're based out of Tampa, Florida and we fly the uh, the KC-135. So basically our main thing that we do is we're, we're known for aerial refueling. We also do a, a couple other different things, but aerial refueling is our main one. And basically what it allows us to do is uh, extend the fight or uh, refuel other jets in the air who maybe can't go from point A to point B uh, without landing. So it's a super awesome opportunity. Um, I'm pretty new to the to the jet. I've been a pilot here for about two years, but it's an awesome opportunity to come out here and just like talk about what we do to everyone. What we said to the younger, the younger students that are going to come out to you? Um, honestly, like come out, ask as many questions as, as you can, and uh, we're here to help you out and uh, guide the way for you guys because um, growing up, I wish that I had an opportunity like this also to just like come out and ask my questions and things like that. So just come out and uh, we'll be here for you. Yeah. Heck yeah, sweet. Thanks guys. Hi, my name is Captain Orkidia Saki and this is my dad. Hi. Um, and this is the cockpit of the KC-135. So the mission of the KC-135 is to offload gas. Um, so we are a gas station in the sky. And this is where all the, some of the magic happens. So this is our fuel panel. You know, we have a forward, a center, and a aft body tank. We offload fuel from the forward and the aft um, body tank. And it goes to the boom in the back, which if you haven't been back there, you should definitely go and see it. And so our boom operators lay down in the back and they, fly the boom into the receptacle of the receiver and we just hit one of those switches and we're offloading gas. And so really what we do is we take the boom operators to work. We're like bus drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's basically it. This jet is uh, a 1960 model, so really old, um, but it is really good at what it does, which is why it's still flying. We just got some new interiors and new engines and that's why we were able to fly this jet in 2023. and for the foreseeable future. So, yeah, any questions about? This is, uh, these are bad, as in, if you're pulling these, you're having a bad day. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we actually had a student try to pull one of those, and that's bad, bad, bad. Um, but yeah, this is how we, we navigate. Um, these are engine health, uh, how we know that the engines are going well. This is our flap indicator and our gear indications. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it's kind of a tight cockpit. The two pilots sit here. If we have extra pilots, they sit there. Uh, the boom operator sits there up front, and so they help us um, on approaches. So they're super involved in what we do. Like like when I was coming in um, yesterday, if I'm 10 fast and like we're just doing too much and we're, we don't know, they're like, hey, you're 10 fast. And so they are absolutely part of the crew and part of every single thing that we do on the jet. This is a crew aircraft. So, so yeah. how many years it took you to get to this point? Well, it depends on what you call a starting point, right? So I graduated from Complex in 2014. I went to the Air Force Academy, um, graduated in 2018, so four years for that. Then I was in pilot training for two years after that. So 2020 was when I graduated and then I had to go learn to fly this particular plane. That took me about eight months. Um, and then I showed up to Tampa or MacDill Air Force Base um, in February of 21. And so I'm essentially just a co-pilot. And then now I'm going through my upgrade process of learning how to become an aircraft commander um, and eventually be able to fly this jet and be in charge and be the aircraft commander. So I can land, I can take off all those things. The, the difference between a co-pilot and aircraft commander is who makes the decisions. And so I'm learning decision making. So, yeah. Bigger, bigger, higher, higher. Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. Always doing better, bigger things, but honestly just super, super grateful to, to get to come back home. Like I'd never in a million years would have thought that I would be given this opportunity. And so there are a lot of things that align to make it happen. And we're here and we're happy and I'm so excited for all the kids that are going to come out today and hopefully even if one out of the hundreds of, ki of, of the hundreds of kids that we see today decide like this is what I want to do, then it was worth it, Mission right? Accomplished. So yeah, super excited. Recruitment 
So yes and no. We, we like to say outreach because recruitment is, is a very specific, like we have some actually Air National Guard recruiters here today, but we are not recruiters. Uh, my, my job is not to be a recruiter. What I, well, my job I think is to inform people what it is that I do, how to get to where it is that I am, and just understand that possibilities are endless. Like on the radio today, I talked about like, Aviation is not the only way to the Air Force, and so if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a mechanic, a maintainer, whatever it is, there's a job for it in the Air Force. And the military is a great avenue to essentially change the trajectory of your life. And you don't have to do it for your entire life. You can do it for four years or 10 years or 20 years if that's what you want. You make the journey yours. So, yeah. Dad, you were saying something outside that it took a village? Yeah, which I was saying that um, I'm not going to sit on here and take credit for everything because to me, it takes the village to produce what you're seeing today. And when I say the village, I'm talking auntie, uncle, teacher. brother, sister, teacher, Sounds pastor. Yeah. And, and we, need, we, we need to go back to that. And that's the issue we're having with this young generation. The village is no longer involved with the kids. And I, I think we need to get back to that and to turn the whole situation around because it's terrible right now. Yeah. So we need to get back to the, mili the village mentality. And this is the village mentality. And this is the village mentality. Product of the, the village. Absolutely. The results I am from a the product village. of the village. This is a product of the village. Yeah. And that's the direction we need to head back to. Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about this moment? Awesome, awesome, <laughs> unbelievable. You know I support the youth them all the time. And this is a big moment for me. It will never happen again in my lifetime. So that's why I'm out here this morning early to view the plane. You know, we in the Virgin Islands don't appreciate our young people doing great things for the VA. Tell them the Virgin Islands got the talent, young talent can done. Unbelievable talent. Whenever they go out, they race to the occasion beyond the call of duty. And I respect that. Enough big up to her. Enough big up to her family. Everyone, as we said, the village raised a child. We get away from that. We still going down our, our sleepy slope. But I hope we could come back. And with some of the training coming here this today, it will inspire them to go in that direction. Hey, good morning. Major Edward Rubio, uh, part of the Air Force pilot. I'm KC-135 at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa. Uh, I'm a pilot, one of the two pilots in the KC-135 crew, uh, basic crews, just two pilots and one boom operator, so uh, pretty minimal. Um, but I'm one of the pilots up front. Uh, takes a team to operate this aircraft and the two pilots and the boom operator. We're working together constantly to make sure the mission happens and uh, we usually do a good job of that. So happy to be here and, and good, to, good to meet you. How you doing? My name is Byron Patrick. Uh, I'm a boom operator on the KC-135. Uh, grateful to be here at St. Croix. It's my first time. Um, what we do as boom operators, we are kind of the, um, I guess, the linchpin of the mission. We go to the back. Uh, we have a boom pod in the back where we control the movement of the boom. We, uh, I guess, quote unquote, fly the boom um, and kind of uh, make sure fuel gets transferred to the receiver during air refueling. Um, so that's, Where's the boom located? Uh, so the boom is aft of the jet, uh, and then we have a boom pod that's in the back as well, and that's where we go during air refueling, and that's where we kind of make it happen. Uh, yeah. And, Hi, my name is uh, Staff Sergeant Travis Nelson. I'm a boom operator in the U.S. Air Force Station at McDill Air Force Base. I uh, work in the 50th Air Refueling Squadron, specifically the 6th Operational Support Squadron as a tactician. And here we have the boom pod. Uh, we have three pallet positions. On the far left, you have the observer position, where whenever we're letting people watch, they come here and lay down and watch through the window. In the middle is where the boom operator actually lays down to refuel. In the, on the, in the middle here? Yeah. And on the right side here, you have your instructor seat, uh, specifically because they need access to the communication devices to tell the airplane on the other side of the glass to either back up or discontinue AR. Uh, if we can get you down there, you can see the controls. Uh, it's, you actually use both hands. So the right hand is for actually flying the boom around and the left hand is for actually extending and retracting it. So you gotta be pretty hand-eye coordinated because you can't really look down at the controls to do what you need to do. You just look out the, uh, the window 
and make sure everything's happening. Training, training, training. Training, training, training. It took four months to get this qualification, and then it, training never stops. It's always continuous. Okay. If you can do it, anybody can do it. Anybody can definitely do this. All you got to do is apply yourself and just dream. Just dream. If you think you can do it, you can definitely do it. All right, so here we have our control panel. You have gauges that tells you how far the boom is extended out and what position it's in. It also tells you how close the aircraft is to the airplane. So typically, the aircraft is within 10 feet, 10 to 20 feet of this plane while we're flying around. So this lever here is used to push the boom in and out. Uh, this lever here is used to lower it and raise it. And you have a whole bunch of other controls here. Control the lights. So they, so in the, in the nighttime, you can uh, adjust the lights so they can see the plane. Or if you're in locations where you don't want to be seen, you can adjust those lights and just turn them off completely. And then down here, you have the actual stick that actually controls the boom itself. See, this is your main control here, flying it around. The instructor also sits on this side so he can assist the boom and make sure nothing bad happens. So typically, we'll have the student here and we'll lay on this side and have our left hand on the boom while they have it on their right hand. And we're kind of just guiding them through the process of making their first contact. Hey, we got Nicholas here, man. Nicholas is on the plane. Nicholas, what do you think? The plane's pretty nice, uh, pretty big. I hear when talking with the pilot, he telling me everything that's going on in the plane, you know. My first time on these kind of planes, you know, usually taking the ones that, you know, you travel Miami, come back, then planes, but never been on this one before. You know, I'm learning a lot. Maybe, maybe, might become a pilot myself, you know. Never know. But, you know, I still learning everything, so. Yeah, man. You know, yeah, what is yours? Well, I know your grandfather flies, right? Yeah, my grandfather flies, yeah. in the family. Runs in the family, yeah. <laughs> This is the reason why we need the village to raise these children so they could be just like my daughter in the future. As you can see, there's a lot of students lined up getting ready to come to, to take a tour on the plane. And hopefully out of these sets of, of students, we may have one or two future pilots. <laughs> Students are going up. You guys happy to be here? Yeah. 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 Become a pilot one of these days? Yes, I'm really happy to be here. Great. 
So how do you feel being here with your students? I am proud. Orcadia was a former student of mine in the accelerated multi-age class at the Ricardo Richards Elementary School for three years, grades four, fifth, and six. So I am beyond proud. <laughs> Ricardo Richard School. She got the new engines. Uh, I'm not sure what this one's got exactly. I'll it. You got to run the boot. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's okay. We got, we got over 130 jobs. We got plenty. Over 130 jobs in the Air Force. We got, we got too many. Too many? Too many jobs. Too many. Yes, I love y'all. Love St. Croix. There we go. What is it? Oh, there you go. It's EOD. Yes, we have that too. EOD. Yes. So he, he wants to be what he wants to be? He wants to be on the EOD team. Yeah. yeah. Nice. He picked his outfit this morning. He picked his outfit? Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Ready. Ready. <laughs> you guys gonna bring something, you guys gotta bring some back. <laughs> we have a big bag back. A big bag back. What's up, buddy? Shame. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those are our Air Force Admiral. We have Army. He's a twin otter. If you have questions, how do you feel about this experience uh, Excellent. Um, basically, to me, it's more of uh, bringing the classroom to the industry itself, right? because aviation is what they're studying, and this is aviation. And so I'm excited um, to bring my students out here, uh, expose them to the real world. Um, thank you. Ira Williams. Great. Thanks. Good. What's 
your name? Cairo. What grade are you in, Cairo? Fourth. Fourth. What do you like about the play? That like, okay, I like like how the fuel tank design where you can refill plates two different ways, basically. Okay. So do you plan to become a pilot? Do you plan to join the Air Force? Probably in the future. In the future? Yes. And what would you like to be? First officer. First officer? Yes. Nice. Thank you. Tell me what you like about the plane. Um, I like how like they have the bunk beds and I got to go in front, so that's the best thing about it. Uh, are, you, are you interested in flying any planes? I'm interested in joining the Air Force. When, in the future? Yeah. And what's your name? Karan. Nice to meet you, Karan. Cool. The captain? captain yeah. Cool. That so you want to he... fly? Yes. Because it's like... <laughs> and what's your name? Azai. And who's your teacher? Miss Bess. Nice to meet you. You Great. too. Cool. My name is Jalicia Ilaraza. And what do you like about being here at this big plane? Um, I like it because it's fun and the plane has a lot of details. Okay. Nice. Who's your teacher? Miss um, Miss Juan Zahn is my homeroom teacher, and Miss Bernard is my second period. And Miss Providence is my third period. The name and what you like about this big plane? I, I, my name is Solomon Now, and I love this plane so much, including the, you know. Being in the pilot seat with yeah. all the controls. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I love being in a cockpit, and I, and I love being in the back where there's all those um, pillows and, um, and those comforter spaces. I like that, that, like, we got to sit in the cockpit and the plane that I wanted to be a pilot. Nice. Great. Got it. Okay. Got it. One more. <laughs> One more. So how do you feel about seeing all these students here today? Okay. It's awesome. It's awesome. I never imagined that she would come back in this capacity and, you know, have such reception with the kids wanting to, you know, to come and to see, even at, even at the young ages that I've seen so far, the little kids, you know, they're just as interested as the big ones. And I am so happy that Arcadia realized her dream and has come to give back and to encourage other students that yes, if I can do it, you can do it too. Yes, I'm proud of her, especially the kids. I taught some of them and here I am enjoying my granddaughter and the children being able to come and identify and probably and hopefully that they'll, some of them will choose this as their career. How does this make you feel? Oh man, uh, lost for words, you know, um, these two women, we, I think that the theme today we talked about it is just the village, right, like you see me standing here, but like I'm a product of so much more, right, uh, I was just like one of these kids growing up in St. Croix, went to Ricardo Woodson Complex, and um, to be able to give back and have these students like see me as like, there's something I could do, you know, as a little a little girl or a little boy from from St. Croix uh, means the world to me, and I'm so grateful for the Air Force for letting me do it. And I think today today has already started off as a, an amazing day, and there's just much more to come. So. As you can see, more and more students are arriving to take a tour of this KC-135 refueler aircraft. As you can see, these students are the aviation students from the Educational Complex Vocational School. And they are here also to get a tour of the, the, the plane. Okay, everybody, I want to see everybody's face. Great. Nice. 
And as you can see, Misaki is there. They just came off of the KC-135. They're from the Educational Complex Aviation class. Got you too. That's Port Authority Fire Service. Here okay, we got the Port Authority Police and Security. They're assisting. The whole crew is here, Daisy! It's okay. Yay! It's a happy feeling here. We got students outside waiting to come in. And we want to thank the Port, the Port Authority for giving us this opportunity. And here we got Fritz, the one and only. As you can see, the fire service is also here. And that's the KC-135 refueler. They say it's a gas station in the air. And here we have George Matthew Jr. He's also on scene. It's all good. As you can see, we have Claudio Marco School here. They're waiting their turn to go in and see the plane. And then we got the little ones in red. We even got the um, nigga man sardine man here. <laughs> Granny Crique, Claudio Marco in red. And they're over here. We even have the Port Authority Police assisting with everything. She's loving this day. She said, I must get her on camera. <laughs> Got you. And let me see. This look like complex. This look like complex. They're just waiting their turn to go in and see the aircraft and learn more. And here is the teacher. The teacher is here. She's always trying to educate the students and open their minds to bigger and better things. So how you feel being here? Oh, it's an exciting opportunity to be here. I love being recorded. You know, Central Educational Complex High School students. We have a strong group here. 44 students. 44 and students. So we're excited about finding out aviation careers and seeing this big thing that is here. So we're just excited. You'll be in shortly. Yes. Take yes. care. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Hi! Hi. This is the ROTC? Yeah. So you guys are excited to go and see this plane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So you're going to become a pilot? You? I want to be in the Air Force. A Marine? Yeah. Air Force? Air Force. Air Force. Aviation. You just want to fly the plane. <laughs> Great. Everybody's here. They're all excited. They're all excited. Again, 
the fire department for Port Authority showing off their capabilities with their fire truck. a happy feeling everyone is just out here waiting to, to get their turn to go on the aircraft here we have two more teachers they're just patiently waiting can I see your picture picture thing Woo! we got a picture great <laughs> we're gonna try and get all the teachers in here all the heads in. Thank you. Got you. I see Mr. Shang is here also. So are you gonna become a pilot? Yeah. I got that too. <laughs> Um, we have gotten such a great response um, from the parents, teachers, supporters, influencers within the St. Croix community, and we are very impressed. Uh, right now, we have about almost 600 students that are scheduled to attend between today and tomorrow. And just the support that we've received from the VI Port Authority, um, from uh, some of the other agencies that have been able to help us today has been amazing. And we're very excited to be here. We're so excited for the kids, um, especially even some of the adults and, and influencers because we're able to plant the seeds and now we can let you water it. Um, so very excited to be here. This is great. Just want to be able to thank everybody for coming and supporting our endeavors. We did not expect such a great support from all of our community members and this is what we're talking about, bringing it home. Thank you so much everyone for making this happen and making today a great day. Students are going up 